In this series I will teach you how to create your first 2D game, and it can be nothing else than the snake game. You might have played it on your Nokia phone or in the browser. The game is pretty easy to recreate, but there is still some functionality that you might want to later add. And the best thing is that we will be using Bolt, which is visual scripting, so you don't need to know nothing about coding. By creating this game you will learn all of the basics of creating 2D games in Unity, as well as coding, animation and just generally all of the stuff that you need to create 2D games. I have a brand new project and we will begin by creating the snake, so we can create an empty game object which will be just parent for all of the parts of the snake. From the open game art I have downloaded some nice sprites for the snake, you will have the link in the description. So we can take all of these sprites and put them into the project. I recommend you to create folders for sprites, animations, scripts and so on that we have it all in order. We can first take the head of the snake, put it somewhere in the scene, we can reset the position like this and put it under the snake parent object. You can see that the snake is a bit small, that's because all of the sizes of the sprites are 40 by 40, so we can select all of them and set the pixels per unit to 40 and we also want to set the filter mode to point, which is used for pixel art so that it looks better and we can also turn off the compression. Yep, this seems to be alright. Now we will add some components to the head of the snake. One of them will be the Box Collider 2D, so that we can later detect some collisions, for example the apples, the border of the map and so on. And we will also add Script Machine, which is used for the visual scripting. So we will go into our scripts folder and create visual scripting and the script graph, which will be for the head of the snake. And the script graph is like a file that will be containing all of our visual code. So we can just take this script and put it into the script machine. Hit this button edit graph to open the script graph window where we will actually do the coding. If you know nothing about visual scripting, don't worry, it is not that hard. The language is pretty similar to the C Sharp, which is the written code which is usually used for developing games in the Unity engine. So when you learn how to use Bolt, you can easily go to the C Sharp. Now, how does it work? We can right click and add some node. We can either search for the nodes in these sections, but what I use most of the time is just type name of the node. If you don't know how the node is named, it is pretty easy to guess it. For example, if you want to set the position, you can try typing position set and you can already see some nodes. For example, for the position, what is important is if you want to be setting position of a transform, rigid body and so on, but usually it is the transform. So we can create a node like this and you can see that it has this green arrow. This is the most important and this is triggering the node. So right now, because there is nothing connected to the input of the flow in this node, it will never get triggered, so it is not going to do anything. So if we want to give it some flow, we need to use one of the more important nodes, for example the update, you will be using this almost all the time, and the update is just sending flow each frame. So we can connect the flow like this, and now each frame it is going to set a position of this transform, which is like this current object on which we have the script machine to 0, 0, 0. Here we can obviously connect another transform or another vector 3, which is for the position, but I'm not going to be explaining it all to you right now. I think that you will get into it as I will show you something else. So let's get to the changing the direction of the snake. There are obviously many ways how to do it, but I will create a object variable, which is just a variable connected to the current object. So this will be a direction variable. The direction is typically represented by three axes, which is the X, Y and Z. So it will be type vector 3. And here we have the volume. So when we press, for example, A on our keyboard, we want to set the X volume to minus 1, because it is to the left. And as you can see in the game when I have the object, I can also move with it 
and this is the x-axis and when I'm moving it to the left it is decreasing so if we would be moving to the left the direction would look like this. So on keyboard input when we are pressing some key and this key is going to be A the action we can leave it on down and you can see that this note has output flow so with it we can trigger some other notes. For example we can set the direction to some volume so we can type set direction which is a variable and we need to input the volume. We can do vector free because this is type of the variable and we can do just a literal which will let us input the volume and as I said to the left it is on the x-axis and it is to the left so it is minus one. Yep, that's pretty simple and we will do it the same way for all of the other keys. And it is simple as that. A is to the left, D is to the right, V is up and S is down. Now let's add some basic movement to the snake. So we probably want to be moving the snake all the time. For this we will add the update node which is happening every frame but uh, we don't want to have a linear movement. We want the snake to move by a bit and then by another bit and so on. So that after some time it moves by one distance unit. How can we do that? We can use transform dot translate. In the parentheses we have parameters of the node and transform dot translate is just going to be changing the position. And because we have the variable direction, which is vector free, then we can use this one with the translation, which is the vector free. So we can connect it like this, that it is moving on update. But as I said, we don't want the snake to be in a linear motion. For this, we will add a cooldown, which will activate every once in a while. So right now we have the duration one, which means that it is going to activate every second. And after the cooldown is completed, we can just move the snake. By the way, here on the left, you can also see some of the information about the node, which might be useful to you. So the target, which is the object that we want to move, we can leave it on this because we have this script on the head of the snake. And for the translation, we can just connect the direction here because we want the snake to move in the direction that it is looking. So now we should have pretty basic changing of directions and some movement. So I can try pressing W and you can see that after one second, the snake is moving in the direction that I'm setting it. Just a quick reminder that I can also teach you individually anything about Unity, Bolt or C Sharp because I just can't fit all of the information into these videos or I can also help you with your personal projects or with the features you are trying to implement. So feel free to reach out to me and we can have an individual lesson. One hour lesson costs 10 euros and is on Google Meet. But what might happen is that the snake is able to turn by 180 degrees from side to side, which is not what we want. So the direction variable will be the current direction and I will create a new variable, which will be new direction for the direction that we are trying to set. Again, this will be vector free. And when we are pressing, for example, the A key, we want to make sure that the current direction is not equal to the right, because when we are moving to the right, we don't want to be able to move to the left. So if and is not equal, this right here, this purple thing, is a boolean which is variable of type yes or no. So if the direction is not equal and now because we want to be moving to the left we want to make sure that it is not equal to the right which is 1 0 0. With these vectors you could also do it using transform that right transform that left and so on it is the same. So when the direction is not equal to the opposite direction where we want to be moving, we can then set, but we want to be setting the new direction and we will basically do this for all of the other movements. And in the update, after the cooldown is completed, 
we will set the direction to the new direction. So we can use set direction and set it to the new direction. And then move the snake to the direction. If you are wondering what these different inputs on the variables mean, the first one is obviously flow, the second one is of type string, which is the name, then it is the object on which we want to set or get the variable, and the last thing is the value of the variable. Now the code should look like this, and if you want to make it a bit more organized, you can hold left control, left click, and create this nice border. And now when we are moving to the right, and I'm pressing A, I still can't move to the left, but I can move up or down. Now let's add some apples that the snake will be able to eat and it will then get bigger. So we can take the sprite that we have for the apple, put it somewhere here, and we will need to add a box collider and make sure that we are using the 2D one because we need to detect if the apple is colliding with the snake and we can do this using the colliders. Here we can also make it smaller or bigger. And when the snake gets to the apple, we don't want the snake to just push the apple, we want him to just collect the apple, and that's why we want to set the box collider to a trigger, which means that it is not going to be like a physical object. And when the snake collides with some object, we want to know if it is the apple or something else. For this we can use tags. So we can hit add tag and create tag apple, and now just set the tag to the apple, which will differentiate it from some other objects. Back in the snake's head script, we will add a node on trigger enter. Make sure that you are using the 2D one, which will just trigger when the current object collides with some other object. So we can leave the input on this. So when the head of the snake collides with some object and we have a output of the flow and a collider. So we need to compare the tag of the collider if it is apple. And if this is true, by the way, if you are just getting a variable from some node, you don't actually need to connect the nodes as you can see here. So when the tag is apple, we can, for example, increase the score and make the snake bigger. So I will create a variable for the score, but because we might need to access the variable on other objects, not only on the snake, I will create scene variables, which are just shared across the whole scene. So we can add variable score. And the type can be integer, which is just some number. So if it is true that we have collected some apple, we can set score to score plus one. And we also want to destroy the object, which is the apple. So we will use the game object that destroy. But we don't want to be destroying the collider, which is only a component on the apple. We want to get a game object. So we need to use collider 2D and game object we get so that we get the actual game object and then we can just destroy it. And one thing that I forgot is that we need also to add a rigid body, which is a component. So we will add a rigid body 2D to the head of the snake and the rigid body we need it to actually detect the collision. And what it does is that it is applying some physics to the object such as gravity, mass, and so on, but we want to turn the gravity scale to zero so that it is not falling down. And now, when the snake gets to the apple, you should see, yes, that the score increases and also the apple got destroyed. Next thing we will do is actually add some segments to the snake after he eats the apple. For this, we'll need to have a object, which will be the segment, so that we can later copy it and spawn it into the game. So I will take the sprite of, for example, this one, which is the body vertical. I will add a collider 2D, 
which we might need to use later. And I will also add a script machine and create new script graph. As I said, later we will need to spawn the segment in the game. So we will make it into a prefab just by dragging it into the project. And what this does is that we have the complete object here. And at any time, we can just drag it into the game like this. Back in the head script, after we collect the apple, we can just instantiate and we can use the game object, instantiate, the position, rotation and parent. And here we can easily drag the original of the object that we want to spawn in the game. But we don't want to spawn it after we eat the apple, we want to spawn it a bit later after we first move, which is here in the update. So for this I will create a graph variable, which are just connected to this current script graph, which will be if we can add segment to the snake, and it will be of type bool, which is as I said, true or false. So after we collect the apple, we can set the add segment, and we want to set it to true, so bool by trl, and set it to true. So after we move, so after the cooldown, if we can add the segment, we could just instantiate the object and all of that stuff, but because I want to have the code a bit more organized, we can use something called trigger event. We can trigger custom event. And what this allows us is to either trigger some parts of the code on other objects or just split the code into smaller parts. So we can name this custom event, for example, add segment. And now we can create custom event which needs to have the same name. So here we are just triggering the event, which is called add segment. And after this one is called, it will trigger this node. The original, we already have it here. The position, for now we can leave it on 0, 0, 0. The rotation, we can just create new one. So new quaternion. Quaternion is holding all of the information about rotation and the parent, because we have the script on the head of the snake and we want the segment to be child of the snake too, we can just access the parent. We can just access the parent of the head and this will be the parent of the segment too. And after we instantiate it, we can set at segment to false. So after we eat the apple and we move, we should see, yes, we can see that part of the snake has spawned on the position 0, 0, 0. Next thing we will do is that the part of the snake is actually following it, but I will leave this for another video because I think that in this video I have already taught you a lot of stuff, so it will probably take you some time to recreate it. So stay tuned for the next parts of this series because we'll be doing a lot more interesting stuff than just the basic movement. I hope you found this video useful, if you have any questions drop them down in the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye!